Sage with Mustangs trying to make it back to the Mink League Championship Series. You could feel the momentum shift and they were able to take advantage. They are the Mink League champions for the seventh time in team history. The fourth. Paul Liner up the middle over the glove of Nibbins. One run will score. Two runs will score. And those guys were just so tough all year long, especially towards the end. You know, they got hot when it mattered the most. The St. Joseph Mustangs are 2021 Mink League champions. They were super excited for the opportunity to bring a championship back. Welcome back to week three of the St. Joe Mustang Show. I'm Mitch Ribrall and I'm actually back this week and I am joined by co-anchor Chris Roush. You were on vacation last week. I don't know if it would be called vacation. I was covering some pretty talented high school teams. That's where you says you were, but were you really there? Uh, yeah. I mean, went sightseeing in St. Louis. But yeah, you saw the arch. I saw the arch, which is cool. Did you try any barbecue? You think St. Louis barbecue is better than Kansas City barbecue? No, barbecue. no, I never said One that. Guys, never yeah. said that, never said that. Well, glad to have you back though. Busy week for the Mustangs last week. You were busy. He was working baseball, soccer. We had you all over the state last yes, week. Yes, it was fun though. But, but glad I'm back here. Mustangs Week Show 3. We have to make sure we, we thank our people. Gets Credit Union, Triumph Foods for sponsoring the show. And on this week's show, doing something a little bit different. Mitchell, you love softball. Your family, you have some college athletes that played yes. softball before too. You elaborate. Yeah, uh, well, I've always been a big softball fan. My younger sister played college softball in D3 back in Oregon, so I've always had the love for the game, and this week there's a couple things going on around softball in the area. It's especially with the St. Joe Mustangs, they've made history before. They made more history this week when it comes to softball, baseball, and the Mustangs. I feel like they're it's thinking the that they can beat us. That's why I want to win really bad. It's not about just coaching first or third. Good eye. Get there. Lexi Kennard and Sammy Bunch donning the Mustangs coaching uniforms means something much greater. I think it allows them to be able to dream a little bit bigger. I think when you're a little girl playing softball, you're always looking at the fences, trying to see who you can be like, who you can replicate. And so to be able to be a representation of them uh, for them tonight on the field is, is an awesome feeling. It's really important. I mean, you, you're starting to see more females in professional sports across the board. So this is just a huge stepping stone. The softball coaching duo made Mustangs and Mink League history Thursday night, becoming the first women to coach in the league. Get on two! Good job! It's really exciting for us to have an opportunity to honor and, and recognize them. And, uh, you know, I think it's great for our guys, too, uh, to, you know, to be a part of this and, and what it stands for. And it's not the Mustangs' first time breaking down barriers. When Reagan Nash, a former Mizzou standout, played for the team back in 2018. These historic moments are a long time coming for women in sports, especially in the softball-baseball dynamic. I think any young lady out there that's wanting to get into any kind of athletic endeavor, you know, the doors are open and don't ever feel slighted. And if you want to go after it, don't let them in. You know, just because you think it's a man's sport or a man's job, don't let that stop you. An incredible night Thursday for Bunch and Kennard, made even better by the fact this Mustangs team welcomed them in and treated them just like any other coach. I was going to say this is your opportunity to steal, but there's somebody in front of you. Thank I was giving you the full green light. Thank goodness. <laughs> They're all really nice and really cool with us, which is great because two females coming in here for one night, they could not give us the time of day, but they've all been awesome, so it's just been great. They might have coached just for one night, but the visuals of the two of them standing on the diamond will be etched in Mustangs history and baseball history forever. For all the little young girls in the stands, for them get, to get to see two females out here coaching baseball is just a huge opportunity. A lot of young softball players, young athletes really enjoying women in sports tonight. And it, it, it's really special and kind of cool to see like Lexi Kennard, Sammy Bunch, they talk about how they're role models for so many people. But there's also more role models that were honored at women in sports tonight too. Yeah, Troy's softball team, they had a phenomenal season, a historic run even. They only lost one game all season and finished second in the state over in Kansas. And uh, here's a little more on them. It was a really cool opportunity, just them reaching out and letting us come and get recognized tonight. After a historic run, the Troy Trojan softball team getting put front and center before the St. Joseph Mustangs game on Thursday. It was uh, real awesome. Hey, we got nothing but support out of Troy in a really small community, but we travel well, and uh, it's just fun to see the girls get the recognition they've got. 
Thursday night was Women in Sports Night, and the Mustangs bring out the entire Trojans team to the mound to get recognized after their second place finish in Kansas State High School softball. It was pretty good considering last year we lost in the regional championship, but we would have liked to, got for, to get first, but we've made it as far as any girls sports in Troy has, so that's pretty good. We were very thankful with the outcome that we got, and we worked hard for it, and it was just a great feeling to finally get up there and win some games. The Trojans making it all the way to the state title game for the first time in school history. Um, I think it made a lot of people in our town proud. To, I hope uh, the other sports get better and so we can have a very strong girls everything. And for the future of the program that these seniors are leaving behind, the hope is that they have inspired younger athletes to do the same thing that they did this year. I hope that more younger girls get involved in sports and want to take accountability and try and do good things. I hope they do good the upcoming seasons and I hope more girls go out and like encourage them to play. And this team is even hungrier to get back to business and finish even better next season. Our goal is to get back to where we were last year and we really just want younger girls to come out for the sport and keep playing and continue to win. A very good season by the Troy softball team. A lot of accomplishments this season, very impressive all the way around. And it's not just on the field that there are impacts. No, absolutely. There's a lot of people, a lot of women in the Mustangs organization that really make this thing go. One of them, you don't see her, but she plays an intricate role. She scores the games too. That's Tracy Verdusco, and she's been with the Mustangs for a very long time as the official scorekeeper for the team. There's been several Mustangs mainstays since day one of the team from the fans to the front office and even the workers up in the press box. The way that she can can do her job so efficiently, I mean really, I mean I have I wouldn't have the slightest clue. There are so many questions about what she does and, and Tracy's like an expert in it. Tracy Verdusco serves as the team's official scorer, a job that's no easy task. She is an example of women in sports. She knows the game. I bet she could go out and coach a high school baseball team. Um, she knows all about the game. As the Mustangs celebrate women in sports, they made sure to recognize all of those that help the team go, like Verdusco, who continues to play an intricate role for the team and for those searching for those much wanted stats. She's had an equally important, and plus the consistency, to have her here since, since day one. Uh, it says a lot about her, and uh, you know we're very lucky to have Tracy. And don't go anywhere because when we come back, we take a look at the history of the Mustangs breaking down barriers, including the first woman player to ever play in the Meek League in Reagan Nash. Also, you like popcorn. People like hot dogs, their drinks, but there's someone behind the scenes that makes sure everything runs smoothly. We'll look at her story too later on in the show. Welcome back to this week's episode of the St. Joe Mustang Show, and we're going to take a look at a couple more barriers that the Mustangs have broken down. Yeah, we've already talked about their first female coaches. We've got to go back in time a few years now. Reagan Nash, back in 2018, became the first woman to play in the Mink League. She was a decorated softball player in high school, also for Mizzou. But let's take a look back at how that became a possibility for Reagan to play for the Mustangs in the Mink League. It's been four years since Reagan Nash became the first woman to play in the Mink League. And Thursday night, Nash returned for Women in Sports Night to throw out a first pitch. Being the very first, very first time was kind of scary. I mean, I was kind of intimidated to begin with, but uh, the players were awesome, coaches were awesome, and I got to travel with the team a few times. I mean, it was just a great experience, and I still have people that come up and talk to me Does about it, it all the time, so it's just a great high. memory. On a night when the Mustangs recognized a standout high school softball team, broke down coaching barriers, Nash able to take it all in amazed by just how much the Mustangs continue amazed by how much the Mustangs continue to do for the game of softball. It's amazing to see how much it's grown over the years. I mean, especially with like how much viewership's grown in women's sports and uh, Lexi and Sammy doing this is fantastic, so it's just great to see. As part of the Mustangs 3, Nash was the first with Bunch and Kennard joining her in historic moments, making the Mustangs a special team to be a part of. And later this month, the St. Joseph Mustangs will induct the 2013 LeBlanc softball team into the St. Joseph Baseball Hall of Fame, an incredible honor for the state championship team. 
who owns the only St. Joe softball title. They joined Sherry Kempf in the Baseball Hall of Fame. The Golden Eagles went 26-3 that season, including a 21-game winning streak to end the year. Some of the state champions remember just how special the run was and say it means a lot to be recognized by the community. Most of us had played together for a long time, so we knew each other's strengths and weaknesses, and it just became... It just became fun for all of us to be together each game and play, you know, the game that we loved. For me, maybe it was when we got to sectionals um, is whenever it really was like, okay, this is like an arm's reach. It's definitely um, something that we strive for and obviously accomplished. Um, but the original goal was just, yeah, let's see if we can get to districts. And then it was like, let's see if we can get to sectionals and then quarterfinals and when by the time we got to the state championship it was like all right this is it let's get it done it really was incredible i think to this day it's something that i mean speaking for myself speaking for some of my friends like we still look back and uh, we we can't believe it still it just truly was something that um, we know we're gonna forever be bonded together with for the rest of our lives Still to come on the St. Joe Mustang Show, presented by Guest Credit Union and Triumph Foods. I'm surprised, Mitchell, you don't have a drink and nachos in your hand. Not yet. Not but we'll yet. get you some. Do you yes. know why? We know who's behind the scenes to make sure you get your fill every time you come out here to Phil Walt Stadium. Perfect. And when we return, we take a look at this week's edition of the 2-0 champ, Blaze Kemper in Blaze's Battlegrounds. Welcome back to this week's episode of the St. Joe Mustang Show, and we are joined by Kai Turner, the owner of the St. Joe Mustangs. It's my pleasure to be here today, and uh, Chris, uh, thanks for joining Mitchell and I for our show. Thanks for showing up, Chris. Thank you for having me. Um, Mitchell's been gone a little bit, so I need to fill him in on what he's missed the last well, week or a half, week and a half or so. He took a long vacation, explored Missouri, Springfield, St. Louis, but what's been going on with the Mustangs? Well, funny you should ask. Uh, that's our job. A lot, every day. So every day there's something going on. That's truly like, and that's one of the beauty of, of what we do is every day is so different. And so, uh, you know, if you miss a game, you've missed out on, on one little sliver of, of what makes this big giant puzzle piece uh, come together. I mean, obviously, you know, we've had uh, our first female coaches and team history, uh, you know, uh, in Mink League history, which is a blast. I know when we did this with, with Reagan, it was so much fun. And, you know, I say that as a father with, you know, with a, a daughter in the stands, for her to be able to watch that, and I'm not alone in that. And how special is it just to have the two first female coaches in St. Joe history? You know, people, it's really like, base, there's baseball, softball, whatever. I mean, really, we pull that out. And so, like, there are so many women who are important to, to the Mustangs. I mean, you go back to like our host family coordinator, long time was originally Denise Cotter, now Jennifer Koch. I mean, without them, like this does not happen at all. And so uh, our longtime concession manager, Lori Price, she's been with us for 11 years. There's so many different things that she does and manage. And, uh, it's critical to our success. Yeah, up in our press box, we've got Tracy Produsco, uh, who is our official scorekeeper. You know, we talk about Reagan and, and look at Sherry Kemp, the first female inducted to the St. Joe Baseball Hall of Fame. And, uh, you know, we also honored the uh, Troy High School State softball champions. And, and uh, you know, this year for the Hall of Fame, we're, we're inducting the LeBlanc 2013 State Softball Champions as well, the only champions from uh, softball champions from the uh, St. Joseph. So there are so many different females. And that's not even to mention, like, you know, our staff of, of interns who have gone on to job in pro sports or, or college athletics or, you know, like like Lexi was was with us yeah. in 2019, and now she coaches there. Like, they have such an impact uh, on what we do here, and so for us to have the opportunity to honor and celebrate and the difference that they've made uh, is pretty special for us, especially for those eyes in, in the stands, and hopefully, let them set their goals pretty high and, and want to do some pretty cool stuff too. You talk about you know the eyes in the stands part. When did you start realizing that hey, this is something that the Mustangs 
could do more so maybe highlighting and kind of because there are like you said your daughter and there's other softball players just young people in the stands that are watching these softball players and want to be like them one day you know believe it or not like i'm uh, growing up i was a pretty immature person and i don't know that i've ever fully matured uh myself but i mean what really got me to that level of thinking is when you know you have your first kid and so when you start to approach this stuff as a father and how this affects them and and uh you know the impact that it can have and you know i come home and my daughter tells me about what happened today so like that's when you really feel it and so uh a lot of the stuff we do out here like i think about you know my kids or some kids you know my my classmates or teammates or stuff like that and so uh just seeing that impact because you really don't know it until uh you hear it from them firsthand and so we have a unique opportunity uh to really hopefully impact and continue uh where these kids could go. And so, uh, you know, we want to help them set those goals high for themselves and help them get get there. Kai, I think we did it. Yep, we did it. Yep, yes we did. <laughs>
This is my competition, right here. Week number three, Blaze's Battleground. Blaze Kemper, 2-0, and you've been challenged by the owner of the Angel Mustangs, Kai Turner. Hey, Blaze, I'm gonna tell you what right now. Uh, guys, someone called 911. We got a firefighter here. We're about to put out this Blaze. You're gonna see it right here live on air. Blaze, you're going down this week. No, nope, the fire keeps growing after this win. No mercy. The fire gonna keep growing. Number one, Blaze, who is the first woman to play for the St. Joe Mustangs? Reagan Nash. That is correct. Okay. What? Whatever. I see how this is going to go. Who are the first female coaches in Mustangs history? Oh, that's simple. Answer it. Sammy Bunch and uh, Lexi Kennard. Number two, what year did the Mustangs have their first season? 2009. That is correct. <laughs> in 2009, the team hosted a special visitor for a game. Who was this character? The San Diego Chicken. All right, number, question number three. Blaze, what does mink stand for? Oh, really? Oh, go oh, come on. Well, you let him finish. Seriously, mink? Well, you let him finish? Oh, man. Let me finish. It's okay. Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas, Summer Baseball Collegiate League. That is correct. In 2014, the Mustangs set a franchise record for number of wins. How many games did they win? And I'll give you a three-win area. Uh, 39 really close it was 43 wins you gotta be kidding what it's no, a franchise no, record oh yes my gosh. check your own website check Blaze, your bio you, you, you wrote it you, you and i are coming we're not done did kai turner's great grandfather help build phil walt stadium paul that is incorrect there are four coaches on the staff name two of them besides johnny coy uh jeremy frankie and uh truman merrick blaze question number five for you what are the team colors of the St. Joe Mustangs? Oh, oh my god. Red, I white, mean... black. In 1954, the New York Giants defeated Cleveland to win the World Series. Five games. So one four one? Five games. That's I answered the question. That is incorrect. They won it in four, they swept them. And still, the reigning defending. Hey, don't get up. You have to say something nice before you get off the set here. Blaze, uh, you're a better man than Chris. Another Blazes Battleground in the books. Week number three is done. It's over. Who's going to be next? I kind of want a chance to redeem myself. I don't know. Maybe a little later in the season. Brush up on your 1954 baseball history, and maybe you will. Yeah, I could probably go back to 2017 for baseball. For Major that was League. five years ago. Major League Baseball. It's like five years ago. I'm pretty young. Yeah, I wasn't born in 1954 either. But anyway, we'll be back next week, same time, same place. St. Joe Mustang Show presented by Gets Credit Union and Triumph Foods. We'll see you next time.